The laptop on everybody's list, and if you're not, you're either an Apple fanboy or a fanboy of another company, because if you're not even considering the Lenovo Legion Pro lineup, then you just, I don't know where your head's at. These offer so much performance, build quality, and usability in such a great budget-friendly package. And by budget-friendly, I mean the mid-tier budget. I don't mean cheap, I don't mean expensive, I mean kind of the middle of the road for gaming laptops, specifically in the use case of video editing, graphic design, photography, 3D modeling, motion design, architecture, and the like. These laptops offer so much. First, we're gonna dive into the usability. And then we're gonna jump into the performance benchmarks to see if this laptop has what you need. Now, first and foremost, the build quality on these laptops is second to none. You have an aluminum top cover, you have a plastic bottom cover, but it is a good plastic material. You have a plastic side panel and a plastic keyboard deck. Now, if you wanna go ahead and make the upgrade to a full aluminum chassis, I would take a look at either the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 or the Lenovo Legion Pro 7. Those have aluminum top cover, bottom cover, and keyboard deck. So just keep that in mind. But if you're looking for the more mid-budget lineup, I would go ahead for the Pro 5. Now they do also have a Lenovo Legion LOQ or the lock, and I'll hopefully be reviewing that one soon. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, I know I've talked about like the budget friendliness, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, this laptop is not exactly the lightest laptop, but for the performance it packs, it's fairly thin and light. Fairly, fairly thin and light, not completely thin and light. And as I mentioned regarding the build quality, these laptops are assembled very well. As you can see, there's no catchy edges around where the bottom cover fits into the side panel. They're assembled really well. And this is one of the main reasons Lenovo continues to stand out to me more and more over the past couple of years. And I've been called a Legion fanboy, but I'm just as big of a fan in other ways of Asus laptops, even the Gigabyte Aero 16, which I feel does not get enough press. And so don't, don't, don't give me the disgrace of calling me a fanboy. I even have some Apple laptops floating around this house somewhere. Now going ahead and checking out the ports, as you can see along the left side panel, we have a nice large vent, USB type A, USB type C, and on the right side panel, we have an additional USB type A, headphone jack, and a manual cutoff switch for the webcam to avoid any cyber spying. On the back panel, we have two USB type A's, HDMI, USB type C, network port, and your charger adapter. Now one thing, as I mentioned in the unboxing, that I don't love about the Lenovo Legion Pro Five is the plastic bezel that wraps the computer. Okay, we have this plastic here. This is plastic, which leads into the top cover. So like I said, though, this is the more affordable pro in the pro lineup. I just wish this was just aluminum, but that's why you buy the seven. And in years past, that wasn't really a differentiator. They were kind of the same across models. So they're really starting to do a better job of differentiating the model tiers in their lineup, which I'm really liking because it's actually starting to delineate the pricing and you're seeing different price points for each model. Now let's go ahead and take a quick look at the webcam so you can see what that looks and sounds like. This is the webcam on the Lenovo Legion Pro 5 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And regarding the speakers on the laptop, here's a quick sample of the speakers so you can hear what those sound like in use. Now the keyboard is something I really like this year over last year's model. It almost seems like they've added a little bit of dampening to the keys and they have like a more of a soft plastic material for the key caps. Whether that's true or not officially, it definitely feels nicer than last year's model. And to me, it's a nice upgrade. It has a nice medium to long key press. And so it's very satisfying and you really have the confidence that you're making that click when you're using this keyboard. Of course, you have your numpad on the right side, full size shift key on the right and left, full size enter key and backspace. To me, these full size keys really make the difference. If you've ever used a laptop with half size keys or three, four size keys, it's super annoying in my opinion. Now the trackpad's still the same size, something I'm gonna keep complaining about until hopefully they make a change for me as a creator. I know gamers really don't use this that much, but for me as an on-the-go creator, I find myself using the trackpad quite a bit. And so that's a little bit annoying that it's not bigger and they have the space to make it bigger. The click is nice, everything feels good in regards to that aspect of the functionality. It's attached very nicely to the chassis, but it is smaller than I would want. Here's a quick sample of me using the keyboard and trackpad in use, just so you can hear what it sounds like.
Now the battery life is one area that I was really open to see an upgrade and we didn't. It's just about the same as last year. We have about eight hours for the Passmark productivity benchmark, seven hours and 21 minutes for streaming video playback, about five hours and 54 minutes for Photoshop work and about four hours for video playback. Now I accomplished these benchmarks by putting the screen refresh rate to 60 Hertz. It's on battery saver mode in Windows. The screen's at 20% screen brightness and it's on iGPU mode. So basically I go into the Lenovo Vantage Center, switch it to iGPU hybrid mode, and that gives me the best battery life possible. Now, just as a side note, the Legion Pro 5 with the Ryzen processor does get better battery life than the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i with the Intel processor. So if battery life is what you're looking for. You get a little bit of an advantage going with Ryzen. Now, taking a look at the screen, this is something that, again, for the price, really continues to amaze me. They're able to get about 537 nits at full brightness with a 100% sRGB, 80% Adobe RGB, and 80% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of around 0.73. So the panel on this laptop is fantastic. Another thing that is great about this laptop is the upgrade path. You can upgrade both RAM sticks and there's an occupied M.2 slot and an unoccupied M.2 slot. So that provides you four upgrades from a storage and memory standpoint. Now you can also upgrade your Wi-Fi card if you're so interested as well. Once again, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, links are in the description below. Now let's go ahead and jump into the performance benchmarks. First and foremost, checking out Cinebench R23. We're seeing really good scores out of this laptop, even compared to something like the Pro 7i with the i9-13900HX. So this laptop is scoring well against its big brother i9 counterpart. Now as we look at Cinebench R23 multi-core, you can see we have about the same spot on the chart. So providing that you want good performance in single core, but you don't care too much about multi-core, I would definitely go for the i7 version. If you're going up to the i9, you can see it jumps up dramatically in points, about 10,000 points more powerful for multi-core. So keep in mind that is simply focusing on multitasking and different processes in your system that benefit from multiple cores running at the same time. But to me, the biggest benefit is multitasking. So if you're running say six to eight apps at the same time, getting the i9 would be very beneficial. If you only run two to three at a time or even two to five, the i7 will be plenty of power for you. If anything, it'd be more advantageous to upgrade the RAM from 16 to 32 gigs. I have found that in Premiere Pro or Photoshop, by simply upgrading the RAM, I'm able to get substantially better performance. Speaking of Photoshop, this laptop scored above the 1000 at a 1160, and that's with the 16 gigs installed. If I was to go and install 32 gigs, which I'm going to do for my future one month review, so definitely wanna check that out. I'll link it up at the end of this video when it's ready, or just head on over to my channel you would probably see this laptop sitting around the 1300 point range. Again, that's just a guesstimation. We'll find out in that one month later if I'm correct. But even for 16 gigs of RAM, this laptop's performing very good in Photoshop. Now taking a look at After Effects, this is another area that I was impressed with the laptop scoring a 923. Now again, that is an app that's gonna benefit from more RAM more than it would benefit from a bigger processor. I misquoted there earlier, I said going from the i7 to the i9, we're looking at the Ryzen processor, but by looking at the Ryzen 7 and then looking up to the i9, which would be an upgrade, you can see it only scores a 923 versus a 995. Sorry, right now I've been reviewing both the Intel version of this laptop and the Ryzen, and sometimes they get crossed over in my head. So forgive me for misspeaking earlier. Now going ahead and taking a look at Blender Classroom, you can see that this laptop is one of the best results on the chart and actually topping the i9 version of the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i. So really good performance from this laptop. Now heading down the line, taking a look at Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo, and SolidWorks, you can see that the first three score pretty much the same spot on the chart down the line. So good performance for this laptop. However, when you get into SolidWorks, you're gonna drop down the line a little bit because we are using an NVIDIA RTX GPU. This is not a workstation GPU. This is a GeForce gaming GPU. And so when you go ahead and get into SolidWorks, they're not very compatible. They do work, but SolidWorks prefers workstation GPUs and even Radeon GPUs like the RX 6700S inside of the Asus Zephyrus G14. That's a great bang for buck option for SolidWorks. But as far as these RTX GeForce GPUs are concerned, they lag a little bit in expectation compared to the other 3D modeling programs, which they do very well in. Now let's take a look at video editing. Checking out DaVinci Resolve, you can see we get a good export time for DaVinci Resolve for 4K to 4K at five minutes and 27 seconds. 
This laptop has no problems with DaVinci Resolve. Great playback, great export time. I'm really impressed with these Windows laptops as they continue to get better inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now moving on to the 4K export time, you can see we scored actually a really good export time, a two minute and 26 seconds for the 4K to 4K. Now what's really interesting is if you go on battery power, you're still gonna get a great export time at two minutes and 47 seconds. But if you're doing 1080p, it scored one minute and 27 seconds. I expected this laptop to be like in the mid 40 seconds for that export time for that nine minute 1080p clip out of Premiere Pro but I was, I was quite surprised. Now regarding 6K B-RAW, I was hoping we'd get a little bit better export time. Now, like I said, I'm gonna add the 32 gigs of RAM and we'll see uh, in the one month later if, if that you know drops the export time. I really think it will a little bit, but for this, it's the 16 minutes and 39 seconds. Good, not incredible, but very good, very respectable. Um, I'm aiming for more like that 13 to 14 minute. Uh, that's like a really kind of a new benchmark with these latest 2023 models. But for the model we have before us, it's a good, it's a good export time. Now as regarding playback, this is an area where we're seeing much better playback results with these new RTX series GPUs. Now this is the RTX 4070 in this laptop and we saw 49 drop frames out of B-RAW and 102 drop frames out of red footage. Now I'm excited to test the 8K footage on the one month later, give you guys those results. But so far the playback is looking really good. And I'll probably test the playback for both 16 gigs and 32. I'm doubting 16 gigs will even be remotely possible. I'm really thinking if you're gonna get towards 8K, you need to be at 32 or 64 gigs of RAM because uh, Premiere Pro uses so much RAM when you're using that high resolution footage. So just keep that in mind. Now, punch for punch, I think the 2023 model is a great buy. However, the 2022 is also a great buy and I'll be doing a head-to-head -head comparison between those two models and also between the Ryzen version and the Intel version. So definitely look out for those videos. Click or tap the screen here if you wanna check it out. Otherwise, links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase purchase and I'll see you in the next video.